Hello everyone, this is the final boss and on today's episode, I can keep a secret. Trust me. Welcome to the show, I am Kyle Bossman and I'm a little proud of myself this week because I got a platinum trophy this weekend in Lego Marvel Super Heroes. And I know that's like, good job Kyle, good job beating that baby game. Uh, but it is, it's a great game. Uh, in terms of how fun it is, I mean you get to be a superhero flying around in a city and you can destroy anything you want and you can steal people's cars and they don't care. It's like everything we fantasize about all day long in a video game and I just, I don't get why more video games don't do that, but that's not what today's episode is about. Uh, it's about 100%ing LEGO Marvel uh, because when I was making my progress towards that platinum, uh, on a PS4 there's a percentage next to each trophy that you get. Uh, meaning of all of the people who have played this game, this, are the, this is the percentage of people who have actually achieved that. Um, and in most cases it's a very small percentage and it kind of also indicates how many people are, are beating games and finding all of its secrets and just depressingly low numbers. So that got me thinking. Uh, for today's episode I want to bring back an old segment. So today's show, but, 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 I like secrets! So a game like LEGO Marvel has a lot of secrets. But, very few people see these actual secrets. Uh, there's a, a trophy for seeing what Stan Lee looks like when he hulks out. 5% of the people who play that game have seen Stan Lee turn into the Hulk. That is, that's crazy. And I'm sort of a rational thinker a lot of the times. Most of the time to its fault. Uh, I like to believe in numbers and statistics. It's probably the only reason why I'm good at fantasy football. Go cold french fries. So, my rational thinking tells me that you are wasting your time if you spend any effort on 5% of your audience. But, but, these cool secrets and levels are, are what makes it worth it to the people who are putting work into this game. If you're collecting, you know, gizmos and jib jabs and, and little blinky spheres, uh, it's much more rewarding if, if you know that there's going to be something at the end for all your efforts. Uh, like take Super Mario 3D World. If you 100% that game, you, you get a whole bonus world with just like the hardest level you've ever played in a Mario game. In Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, if you collect all of the gems and all of the booze, you get the blackest gift for the most brutal game players. Nothing. So bad example. But there's no way that I would have 100%ed Lego Marvel if I wasn't going to later be rewarded with Lego Stan Lee and Deadpool and this secret bonus level where Magneto wants to go back into prison to get his chessboard back. But, 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 game development is not getting cheaper, it's getting more and more expensive. There's like bigger budgets, bigger staffs, bigger DLC, we need more money. And so I don't understand why we're putting these things in these games if they're going to cost money. And, and it's not even just the bonus stuff, it's like most people don't finish games. Even when I looked at the trophies for the other games that I own, uh, like th most of completion rates are like 30 to 40 percent is all that you could ever hope for for people to finish your game. Uh, to me, that means that the needs of the majority are not being met, so games should clearly be shorter. But, 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 that is plainly evil, Kyle. Even for you. Like, let's just make games for people who appreciate games, right? And like, who's to say those people aren't enjoying the games, even if they don't finish it. They're probably still having a good time. They're, they're probably the type of people who walk into a game knowing they're not going to finish it, and that is okay. But, 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 isn't that kind of a failure on an artistic level? If your engaged audience doesn't care to see the thing through? Like, doesn't that suck as a creator if, if most of the people who are looking at your product don't care to see the end? I don't know. I, I, I kind of feel like you should try to, to reach an audience as wide as possible. And if your games were shorter, more people would play through them. But, 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 no. No, sir, we're not gonna make our game shorter because you know what happens then? Then all the reviewers slam us. And then the commenters rally against us and the little gnomes in the message board make their little opinions heard. And suddenly we're the bad guys for making a short game. Sorry you wanted to see the end, everybody. And then our Metacritic score plummets and your sales plummets. And everyone in this town knows, high Metacritic score, high sales, baby. 
<laughs> and actually, that was the thinking. That was it that sort of uh, drew to this conclusion of this, this mental tennis match. Uh, and that, yeah, uh, long games with secrets are, are, are sort of mutually beneficial to game makers and game players. I think there's a certain uh, value that we expect when we spend money on a game. We walk into a store and say, I'm spending $60 on a long game. Here you go, I feel good about this purchase because I bought a long game. Even if we're not gonna finish it, most people don't. They still wanna buy a long game. Uh, and so as a person who likes playing games and likes finding secrets and unlocking things and watching the credits to a game, uh, I'm actually uh, grateful that publishers and developers are, are willing to accommodate me and this apparent minority of people who like to play games for more than three hours. Uh, and yes, of course, I realize they're kind of financially obligated to make games long and hide secrets in them. Uh, I'm still appreciative, so thank you. That is the episode for this week. Uh, if you're on Twitter, you can find me at Kyle Bossman. I uh, want to say thank you, by the way, to the people who this morning convinced me to make the show about this and not this Microsoft acquisition of Gears of War, because I don't think I could have been nice about that. Uh, I will be back here next Wednesday. I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. Hi everyone, uh, I just have kind of an announcement to make. Uh, I've recently learned that only 2.3% of total viewers of this show stick around for these bonus bits we do at the end. And you know, sometimes it's just an outtake, but sometimes we put a lot of work into these. And uh, I just wanted to officially state that that's not gonna happen anymore. Um, I'm, I'm sorry if you were into them, but clearly there's not even anyone watching right now. So, uh, that's the way it's got to be. Anyway, I hope to see you next week. I suppose that was the moment where the show died. From then on, really, the, the love kind of evaporated out of it. It's like when, when I stopped doing bonus bits, people started taking the show more seriously. The final last minute, it's, it's a refined show now. It's very on focus. I don't know, it happened real fast. I became kind of like some internet celebrity, right? Like I Justine and Smosh, I was one of them, finally. I sort of became like this rolling snowball of success. It all just kind of piled onto each other, just steamrolling, I couldn't stop it. I was the first human being ever on the cover of Game Informer magazine in the month of May 2015. That was a big deal, but you know, none of that. None of that made me happy. I went up in space. I bought a car that's shaped like a dinosaur. I knocked up two different supermodels. And none of that worked. I remember it was one day. Uh, I was on a business trip up in Detroit, shopping for properties. I was at the airport, though, and this kid comes up to me named Acid Trip 69 kid says, hey, how come you don't do bonus bits at the end of your show no more? And I said, come on, kid, nobody cares about those. And the kid says, yeah, but you do, don't you? And the truth is, yeah, I did. I loved doing those bonus bits. That was, you know, that moment was a moment where I could say or do anything I wanted to, and it didn't matter because it was a bonus bit. You know, if I'm going on for too long or it's boring, you know, who cares, right? You know, change the tab. Get out of here if you're bored. You know, it's my bonus bit. It's, it was freedom is what it was, right? It was like only in that moment is when I was free from the, the expectations, you know, and the criticism of a regular internet audience. And then I thought about those game developers, right? Because like maybe they liked putting that secret stuff in the games, you know? Maybe that was fun for them. Maybe they didn't care how many people saw it. You know, as long as they had a good time putting it in there. Like, that's what this whole existence is all about, right? It's like having fun. So I, I gave Acid Trip 69 a candy bar out of my briefcase and was on my way. But the next day, I went to talk to my manager, Mr. Mime. 
And I said, you gotta let me do bonus bits again. I missed the bonus bits. And he dances at me. And he says, uh, the kids don't want that anymore. You know, they're over the bonus bits. The kids want this. And you know me, I, I couldn't help myself. I had to try. So last week, at the end of last week's episode, after the credits rolled, I tried to do a bonus bit. I don't know, something about Philip Dollarfield or something. But I don't know what happened. I couldn't get it out right. The words were coming out wrong, and I was just, it wasn't funny. And my guest, Joaquin Phoenix, made a mean joke about it. Then, the next day, John Hamm made fun of me on Twitter. Mr. Mime was right. They didn't, they didn't want my bonus bits anymore. Because that's the thing, right? You can't make Call of Duty for years and then suddenly make an intelligent, interesting game. Because that's not what your audience wants no more. And that's not what my audience wanted. It is too late for me. But you know who it's not too late for? My past self. That is why I created this time machine. The plan is simple. I will go back in time and I will tell myself how important the bonus bits are. It's the only way. Hi everyone, I uh, just have kind of an announcement to make. Uh, I recently learned that only 2.3% Never, never mind that. Um, you ever notice that Nintendo, a as a company, kind of acts like an elephant? Like, uh, but um, bum, bum, ba bum, bum. I promise I'm gonna change. Ba bum, ba bum, ba bum, bum. But I'm never gonna. That felt really good.